Here are the top 10 things you can look for on your coins from your coin jar. Now you could go to the bank and get rolls of coins. You can look in your coin jar that you've saved up over the years. You could even look in grandpa's old coin collection or maybe a collection that you inherited for these different types of errors that can give your coin a lot of value. So when you're going through your coin jars, you want to look for this. And this can take place on multiple different coins. So this is what is known as an RPM or a repunched mint mark. Now this is taking place on an older wheat penny from 1934. We'll show you some other dates as well. This coin sold on eBay, you can see, with five bids for over $1,100. Now the condition or the grade of the coin will affect the value as well. But here's exactly what you want to look for when you put a coin under your coin microscope. You want to look for that repunched mint mark. You can see that at the bottom of the D mint mark, most noticeably, and there in the middle. That is is something that you want to look for on all kinds of different pennies and other coins. Here's a repunched D mint mark taking place on a 1939 Washington quarter. Now, again, here's another penny. This is a little bit different. This is not a repunched mint mark. This is an OMM, which stands for over mint mark. So on this 1944 penny, a D mint mark is over an S mint mark. So that is something that you wanna look for as well, over mint marks, repunched mint marks. All right, so this next one is an S mint mark that has been repunched on a 1945 wheat penny. So you always wanna look for the D mint mark being repunched, the S mint mark being repunched, as well as over mint marks, D over an S mint mark that we just looked at. Now, of course, you can do this with a coin loop. You can do this with your coin microscope. We have available at the link below this video. That is something that can add value to your coins when you are searching through your coin jars, coin collections that you may have inherited, or even coin rolls from the bank. I really hope you find a valuable coin like that one. Now, something else you wanna look for is a doubled die. So we have the obverse of the coin, the front of the coin, and then the reverse, the back of the coin. So that means we're gonna have a double die obverse or a double die reverse, reverse, or both. Now a double die is one of my favorite coins. This case here is a 1955 penny, one of the most famous double die coins of all time. Look at every single 1955 penny you have because this one here sold for over $2,100 and the coin has not been graded. There's actually a lot of fakes of this coin out there and I've done a whole video on the 1955 penny, which you can look up here on YouTube. So just type in 1955 penny couch collectibles and I tell you everything about that coin. Now 43 bids there over a $2,000 coin. Now here is doubling that is taking place on a Washington quarter. So you can look for that on the phrase in God we trust. This is on a 1934 quarter. So it's a pretty old quarter here, but it is a double die obverse as well. Now here's a more modern coin. In 2009, they had four different reverses for the Lincoln penny. Now this is the professional reverse design and it has doubling there on the columns of the building. So you wanna look for that double die reverse on the 2009 Lincoln cent as well. Now keep in mind guys, there are thousands of double dies out there, different types of double dies on all kinds of different coins. I'm only showing you guys a few examples here. In my other videos, I go more into depth of every different coin date. 1972 penny, 1995 penny, 2009. There's actually more double dies out there on different 2009 pennies as well. So just type in 2009 penny, couch collectibles, and you'll find those videos once again. Now here is a 2020 quarter that has a double die as well, the Salt Bay quarter. So you want to look for that again on the lettering of the coin with your coin microscopes or with your coin loops. Like this one that we just found in this roll, let's open it up and see if it's a double die. All right, all we gotta do is put it underneath the coin microscope. And I can tell you that is not a double die, unfortunately. I can even show you here on a coin loop. So make sure you guys get one in the comments below. Another thing that can add value to your coin, and I am talking an extreme amount of value, is if your coin was struck onto the wrong planchet. This is a super rare 
coin. So in 1982, it is the transitional year where the U.S. Mint went from producing one cent coins or Lincoln pennies with mostly copper into mostly zinc. All right, so copper pennies are going to weigh 3.1 grams. Just put your coins on a scale. I have these available again at the link below, and you could tell if your coin is copper or mostly zinc. A mostly zinc penny will weigh 2.5 grams, mostly copper penny, 3.1 grams. So in 1982, there's like seven different pennies, as we can see here. We have large date, we have small date, we have zinc, copper, a lot of different, uh, a lot of different varieties here of the 1982. Now here's the difference between a large date and a small date 1982 penny. Now this is a small date where we see that two curve in the middle of the two. On the large date, the two just goes straight down and hangs a right. So that is the easiest way to tell between the large date and small date. I think it's very visible. Now keep in mind, you know, up into 1982, again, those coins are 95% copper. So which 1982 penny is actually the rarest one? This one right here. Even though this coin is in not so great condition, this coin sold for over $10,000 at auction how much money? Over $10,000 at auction because it is super, super rare to find a 1982 small date with the D mint mark below the date that weighs 3.1 grams. So all you wanna look for is the 1982 small date, make sure it has a D underneath the date, put it on a scale and see if it weighs 3.1 grams. If it does, you may be in for some money. Man, I love searching for mint error coins. Now, other things that can give your coin some value is a die clash. So this coin here is a 1969 penny. Now, typically a 1969 penny would just be worth one cent unless it was a very top grade or unless it has a mint error like this. This coin actually sold for almost $150 and you can see why. As we zoom in there on the front of the penny, the obverse here, you can see the pillars from the reverse design of the coin, the Lincoln Memorial, coming through here. Now you can also see the outline of Lincoln on the reverse of the coin as well. So the obverse coming through the reverse, reverse coming through the obverse. That is a die clash. Something so simple to look for on your coins when you're coin roll hunting or just searching coins from your coin jar. Now here is a 1983 Washington Quarter. Very, very common coin. They made a lot of these coins. It's something that could easily be passed up that you could still look for from coins from the bank. So again, it has clashed dies, and you can see that here as we zoom in on the quarter. On the obverse of the coin, you can see the reverse design coming through. And as we flip the coin over, you can see the outline of Washington coming through here on the reverse of the quarter. This coin sold for nearly two hundred dollars at auction. Now again, this can take place on all kinds of different coins. This coin, believe it or not, a one dollar coin, which you can actually go to the bank. The bank has tons of these one dollar coins, at least mine does. And uh, you know, because no one really uses these coins. So you can go to the bank, get rolls of these one dollar coins and search for errors like this. This coin sold for around one thousand dollars because it has that die clash. You see the errors pointing there towards the design uh, uh, coming through there on the obverse and the reverse. So again, that can happen on pennies as well. This is a 2022 penny where we see the shield coming through here on the obverse of the coin, the shield from the reverse of the coin, of course, coming through there on the obverse of the penny. The coin sold for $56 ungraded. Now this coin here, one of my subscribers, Sheila G sent in. This is a very, very nice find on a 2021 Jefferson nickel. It is a die clash once again in here where we see the building coming through here on the obverse of the coin going through Jefferson's face and even there on the field of the coin. So that is very, very cool. You can actually see Jefferson's eyes completely coming through here on the reverse of the coin. I mean, how cool is that? So always something to look for even on your newer coins. Now, a lot of people get this one confused. The close AM versus the wide AM on the reverse of a Lincoln penny. Which dates are you supposed to look for the close 
AM on? Which dates are you supposed to look for a wide AM penny? Well, in my book, A Guide to Coin Hunting, as you guys can see, shows you the dates that you were supposed to look for this on. Now, one of the rarest ones is the 1992 penny. This one here on eBay just sold for $1,200 because it's a 1992 D mint mark Lincoln penny that has a close AM, where the A and the M are nearly touching. A wide AM is where the A and the M are separated and are not touching. So big difference there. Some pennies are supposed to have a close AM, some are supposed to have a wide AM. Again, I show you the dates in my book, which you can pick up on couchcollectibles.com of which dates to actually look for the close AM or wide AM on. This coin sold for over $22,000 because it has that close AM. Now, one of my favorite mint errors that you can look for on a coin is a dropped letter. Now, this is super, super rare, and you can look for this on all kinds of different coins. As we see, this first coin is a 1965 penny. Now, this has a dropped letter A from the word America there on the reverse of the coin. $160 is what this penny actually sold for because of that mint error. Now, this can take place on modern coins as well, like this 2006 state quarter. Now, if we look at this coin, you may not really see anything at first, but as we zoom in, you can see that dropped letter Y from the word Liberty right there on the neck of Washington. This coin sold for $780 at auction because of that dropped letter. Now this has also taken place on the Hawaii state quarter as well from 2008. This coin also sold for nearly $800 but this is a different letter that's dropped. This has a dropped T from the word trust down there by the D mint mark. The D is actually supposed to be there. That stands for the Denver mint, which is where the coin was minted. But the T there is the dropped letter. So that is what makes the coin extremely valuable. A quarter, 25 cents for over $800. That is a pretty significant profit there. Now, this has also taken place on older coins as well. This is an 1883 Carson City Silver Morgan Dollar coin. And we see that O on the back of the coin at the bottom on the reverse. That is a dropped letter there from the word dollar. Now you see it says CC, that is actually the mint mark where the coin was minted in Carson City. So always look out for the dropped letters that could easily be passed up on quarters and pennies if you're not paying attention to your coins. This coin sold for over eight thousand dollars. Double denominations now are some of the rarest mint errors that you could possibly find. Now this can take place on American currency or foreign currency. If we look at this coin here, this is supposed to be a Canadian dime, but we have a one cent Canadian design struck on to a 10 cent Canadian coin. So you will see both designs of the Canadian dime and the Canadian one cent coin. That's why the coin sold for $1,200 at auction. Now here's a different type of double denomination. So we have a penny, we have a quarter, a state quarter, a Lincoln penny, and you can see it's pretty obvious. We have a, a Lincoln cent design where the die came down and struck a state quarter. Now that is an extremely rare error, and this coin sold for $15,000 because of it. Now this one here, not as is noticeable, but obviously pennies are not supposed to be this color, right? This is a 2007 Lincoln cent design that was struck onto a Roosevelt dime. So we'll see both the Lincoln cent design along with the dime design. This coin sold for over one thousand dollars. And then we can also see things like this where an American currency and foreign currency are kind of together. So we have a 1982 Panama five cent design that was struck over a United States Jefferson nickel. So you can see both designs of both coins, the Panama coin, 
design, the Jefferson nickel design, the coin ended up selling for $10,000. Now we can't forget about die breaks, die chips, shattered dies, things like that. These can vary in value. So we're gonna start off with some lower end stuff here. This is a die chip. So a lot of you guys have found these coins where, you know, your nine or your five or whatever on your date is filled in there. You can see that nine being filled in. That is just a small die chip. Some people collect them. This coin only sold for three bucks. It's not super rare, but this next coin here has a die break, which we also call a cud. So this coin sold for $84. Now this coin was circulated. You can see a lot of the, you know, nicks and scratches on the coin from being in circulation. Uh, so if this coin was in better condition, it could have sold for more, but you'll see that large extra metal there on the rim of the coin. That is the die break that you want to look for on your coins. And this can happen on a variety of different coins, just like this 1970. 74 penny that sold for $144 at auction. And this can even take place on the interior of the coin as well, like this die chip here on Washington's chin on a state quarter from the year 2000. This coin ended up selling for over $75 even in this condition, not too bad for 25 cents. And then we also see a die break here or a cud on the rim of the coin there on a Rhode Island quarter from 2001. This coin sold for $17 at auction, all because of that little die break there. Now, typically the larger these are, the more valuable they will become. But let's move on to a shattered die. This coin here sold for $100 on eBay, and you can see, kind of speaks for itself you know the die has been shattered this is the result of that so always look for those as well this is a, a similar instance here on a 2020 penny that sold for over six hundred dollars at auction a retained die break here on the reverse of the coin so super super rare error to look for and again this can take place on the 2021 penny for instance here as this coin sold for one hundred and fifty dollars as is ungraded on eBay. So always look for die breaks, die chips, shattered dies, all those things can give a coin value. Here's a 2022 quarter that has a small die chip on Washington's nose. The coin sold for $90. So around a $100 quarter there, all because of that small die chip on the nose of Washington. Shattered die, die break, die chips, I love them all. Now these are types of errors that you can still look for in circulation in coin jars and coin rolls from the bank and old coin collections. This is, uh, you know, a double strike. So the coin has been double struck and the design flipped over. Now on the obverse of the coin, you can't really tell much unless you're paying attention very, very closely. Now on the reverse, you can see that, but again, from a distance, you may not notice something like this. Uh, as you can see, this is the reverse design that has been double struck and that design is rotated all the way upside down. So you can see the lettering down here at the bottom that was at the top of the coin and vice versa. And this coin sold for over $1,300. Now there are more extreme type of double strikes that we're obviously not finding in coin rolls like this 1985 quarter that sold for over $130. And I think that double strike kind of speaks for itself. Now here's a 2007 $1 coin that was not double struck, but it was actually triple struck. Triple struck or double struck. I'll take either. So you can see that design being triple struck there. I think that's a very obvious one uh, to the naked eye as well, obviously. But this next one, not as noticeable, I would say. This is a double strike on the $1 coin, Sacagawea dollar coin from 2009. And we can really see it there as we zoom in on the lettering of the reverse of the coin. That is something you could always look for even on modern coins. This coin is worth over 15 hundred dollars and something that a lot of people get confused with is missing clad layers missing clad layer still haven't found one yet 
Typically, when I receive pictures or images of coins to review, I will receive a lot of damaged coins or environmentally damaged coins that people think are missing the clad layer. However, they're not. Um, but this one here is actually missing part of the clad layer. So the clad layer is the outer layer of the coin. If you look at a coin, a clad coin from the side, you can see that inner copper layer on the side of the coin, right? Well, this is actually showing you that inner copper layer of the coin because it's missing, uh, you know, about a third of the outer clad layer. You see the clad layer on the right, it's got that silver color. It's not actually silver, it's clad. And because of that, this coin sold for over $185. Now this can take place on a variety of different coins like this $1 coin from 1971. An Eisenhower dollar here that's missing the whole clad layer on the reverse of the coin. And that's why this coin sold for over $1,300. That's right, you're turning a $1 coin into over $1,000. Now here's the same case. We have a 1979 $1 coin. You guys are very familiar with the Susan B. Anthony dollar coins. This one is missing the outer clad layer on the front of the coin or the obverse of the coin. And that will give the coin a lot of value. This coin sold for over $430 at auction. Again, this can take place on Roosevelt dimes as well. Here's a 1990 dime, looks normal on the reverse, but as we flip the coin over, it's missing that clay layer. This coin sold for over $75. And same thing with this coin. This is a quarter from 1999 that's partially missing that clay layer on the reverse of the Georgia State quarter. And this coin sold for over $120 ungraded. So it really depends on if the coin is graded, what the grade is, which is the condition of the coin, uh, because all of those things will affect the value, uh, you know, depending on uh, the market as well, that will affect the value. And this coin here from 2015 also sold for over $1,300 and it is graded by NGC. So looks normal on the reverse, but as we flip the coin over, you're missing that outer clad layer on the obverse of the coin. And that's a 2015 modern quarter that sold for over $1,300. Such simple things to look for in your coins from your coin jars that can give them an extreme amount of value. So next time you guys are hunting through your coin jars, you better look closely with your coin microscope I have available in the link below or your coin loop. And don't forget your coin scale and your coin roll hunting mats and my book, A Guide to Coin Hunting. Make sure you guys check it out in the link below. And don't forget to subscribe in the middle. Feel free to check out the videos to the left of me. And until tomorrow, I'll see you guys in the comment section below. This is Couch Collectibles and this is where I disappear.